The Buddhists say that pain is inevitable, but suffering is optional. They also say that worries and fears are closely related to attachment. In this video, you will learn about three sources of our anxieties and worries and the appropriate antidote to better deal with them. The more attached we are to someone or something, the more we fear not having it or being separated from it. For example, if we are very attached and emotionally dependent on a particular person, we are afraid that this relationship will end. If we are attached to money and financial security, we are worried about not having enough. If we are attached to our reputation, we are afraid of looking foolish in front of others. On the one hand, it is normal to have such concerns because we have been raised to be attached to these things. On the other hand, attachment creates worries and fears in us. The solution is not to give up our partner, our friends, our money and our reputation, but to let go of attachment to these things. Then we can enjoy them free from fear. But how we can let go of our attachment? Attachment can be a source of anxiety and worry and for most people it is very difficult to understand this because they focus only on acquiring things. This means not only material possessions but also emotional or spiritual goods such as being loved by someone or attaining inner peace. In this context it is important to understand the difference between attachment and desire. The problem is not our desires, goals and preferences. The problem lies in our relationship to them, which causes us to suffer. By suffering, Buddha meant the following things. First, getting what you don't like. Second, being separated from what you like. And third, not attaining what you desire. The Buddha said, All conditioned things are impermanent. When one sees this with wisdom, one turns away from suffering. We should realize that everything in our lives is impermanent. If we want to make peace with our reality, we should accept impermanence, unpredictability, and lack of control. Fighting against these things will lead to unnecessary suffering. However, if we accept these things, we can rather enjoy our lives. If we do not understand this, attachment will arise. And with attachment comes anxiety and fear of loss. This can become a vicious circle. The more attached we are to something, the more afraid we are of losing it. And the more fearful we feel, the more attached we become to that thing. Understanding and accepting that everything in our life is transitory and temporary will help us to get rid of some attachment and as a result it will also help us to deal with our worries and fears in a better way. Thich Nhat Hanh puts it this way, it is not impermanence that makes us suffer. What makes us suffer is wanting things to be permanent when they are not. When we dwell very much in the past with our thoughts and keep ruminating on painful memories, or our thoughts keep circling around the future, what bad things could happen to us, then worries fears and discomfort arise and we are not fully present in the here and now. Many people are not even aware of these thought processes and live in a kind of autopilot mode. What can help us here to become aware of these thoughts and then return to the present moment is mindfulness. When we are mindful, 
we focus all of our attention on everything we are experiencing in the present moment. Thoughts, feelings, sensations. Without judging, interpreting, analyzing or following them. Thoughts will always come back. When we practice mindfulness, we learn to change the way we deal with them. Mindfulness can be developed through practice. A good start to mindfulness practice is to focus on our own breath. Through mindfulness, we will then notice that fears and worries are not always there. They show up in different degrees of strength. They come and go. They are impermanent. Through regular practice, we will recognize more and more quickly when our thoughts are drifting off into the past or future, leading us into negative thought spirals. Gradually, we also get better and better at viewing thoughts only as thoughts, not evaluating them and consciously not reacting to their content. Over time, this will lead to more calm and relaxation. Worries and fears will then lose more and more of their power. Our attention is thus less captured because now only thoughts are seen in them and no longer the reality or the absolute truth. Me, my worries, my fears, my problems, my family, my job, my life, me, me, me. We have an incredible attachment to ourself and cling to it. We want to be happy. We want this and we don't want that. We don't like this, we don't like that. I come first. Such self-centeredness leads to anxiety and worry. Because of this self-centered attitude, we pay an incredible amount of attention to everything that has to do with us. In this way, even very small things related to us become extremely important and we worry and get stressed about them. For example, if someone else's car is damaged, we say, well, that's unfortunate, and don't give it a second thought. But if it affects our car, we get upset and complain about it for a long time. If a friend was left by his partner, we say, don't worry too much, you will find the right partner soon. If something like that happens to us, we are depressed, hurt or even angry for a long time. If at our workplace a colleague is criticized by the supervisor, we may feel a little sorry or it doesn't bother us much. But if we receive negative feedback, then we are offended, upset and it keeps us busy for days. As we can see from the examples, worry and anxiety are also closely related to self-centeredness. The greater the idea that I am the most important in the universe and everything that happens to me is so crucial, the more anxious we will be. In conclusion, another way to deal with anxiety and worry is to reduce our self-centeredness and train our minds to pay more attention to others. This does not mean ignoring ourselves. We need to pay attention to ourselves but in a healthy way, not in a neurotic, anxious way. Of course we need to take care of our body, mind and soul, but we can do this in a healthy and relaxed way by paying attention to what we think, say and do. This is where mindfulness comes back into play. Self-centeredness puts undue emphasis on ourselves making a big deal out of every little thing and occasionally causing us to despair. But if we help others wholeheartedly and take a sincere interest in them, our anxieties will be relieved as a result and our happiness in life will increase.
the Buddhist monk Shantideva once said, all those who are unhappy in the world are so as a result of their desire for their own happiness. All those who are happy in the world are so as a result of their desire for the happiness of others. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, subscribe to the channel and more importantly, share the video with someone who can benefit from this content. Thank you and stay inspired.